G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Well, just before I started this video, I refreshed this. This was at 649 billion. Now it's at 656 billion. So it jumped up 7 billion uh, in a matter of a very short time. So I was just about to say we had a bit of a correction, but that's all kind of disappeared. I mean, you can, you can see it in the 24 hours. Uh, but in the one hours, they're already starting to bounce back. So it was a very sort of quick correction. Now look, BTC dominance uh, getting well into that 65% now, and I think it will start to rise. I think that's going to go a little bit higher. Uh, how much higher? You know, that's the question. Look, gas prices coming down a little bit. Was it 40? Now it's down to 31. Again, we really want to see those single digit gas prices. But look, it is what it is. Now we can see that even though this jumped up seven uh, billion dollars, it's still down four point five percent. So what we need to remember right now is this market cap at the peak of the two hundred uh, sorry two hundred the two thousand seventeen uh, sort of bull run, which did stretch into two thousand and eighteen only just, but we'll call it the two seven thousand. 2017 bull run this was at 880 billion we're well under that and at the time this was 880 billion this was 19,400 so there's less money in the total market cap at the moment but more money in Bitcoin so there's still plenty of money to come this is still very very early this is all just early institutional adopters and, you know, obviously people who have been around in crypto for a little while, some newcomers, but mainly it's just big institutions getting in nice and early. So these numbers should, again, not financial advice and nothing's guaranteed, but should, should God, I'm struggling. What is going on? Should rise substantially over the next sort of, you know, next year anyway exactly how long it lasts who knows it could even push into 2022 but we are early uh, you know based on everything that's happened in the past i can't fathom what these prices are going to be because we've still got news uh that you know institutions are still buying bitcoin right now and a lot of it is otc when the otc runs out it is just what's left on the exchanges and the price is going to skyrocket it's going to absolutely shoot up all right look ethereum bounced back as well uh, and again you know bitcoin was up around that sort of twenty four thousand dollar mark it was down in the twenty two thousands not that long ago at all so now it's back up in the twenty three thousand so it's just hovering around there look it's still being bought all right let's have a look what are the big movers in 24 hours were there any because a lot of things pulled back Right, there we go. There were still things that moved quite well in 24 hours. Elrond uh, has been on uh, quite a run. Empty Set Dollar doing well. Uh, Nia, never heard of it, but you know has been doing well. Dogecoin, look, the TikTokers, they're just pushing that to, you know, as far as it'll go, basically. But also Elon Musk has put some, uh, at least one anyway, uh, tweet that's the word i was looking for out about dogecoin so that obviously helps synthetics network so doing well still hasn't had a really kind of crazy sort of pump that others have had but don't get me wrong over seven days it's done pretty well but it's slightly tapered off a little bit so we'll just have to wait and see losses definitely were losses so the graph Again, it pumps so much, so of course it's going to sell off. And, you know, hopefully anyone who was involved in the graph was buying it back down here and, you know, didn't buy it up here because they're probably going to see some substantial sort of losses there over the next few days, at least probably, you know, somewhat like a 50% correction, possibly more. But, you know, we'll have to wait and see. That doesn't mean it's not a good project. It just means you're pumped by that much. You, you, you're bound to have a, you know, a correction at some stage. So, look, most of these losses aren't so bad. The graph, again, it had such a big one. Uh, Nexo, again, it's still up 10%. Oh, excuse me. Over the last seven days, so, you know, not doing too bad. But all these otherwise single-digit losses, and again, Litecoin, we can see it's lost some, but in the last hour, it's starting to uh, pick back up already. Same with Stellar and all the rest of it. Now, let's go over here and have a look. Sacramunchi's Skybridge, we spoke about them a little while ago, files with SEC to launch a Bitcoin fund. 
An application for Skybridge Bitcoin Fund LP has been filed with the Securities and Exchange Commission. Anthony Sacramucci's multi-billion dollar hedge fund, Skybridge Capital, has submitted a formal application with the United States Security Regulator to launch a new Bitcoin fund. The Form D for an exempt offering appeared on the Securities and Exchange Commission's website on Monday. The proposal lists Skybridge Bitcoin Fund LP as the issuer and Skybridge Bitcoin Fund GP LLC as a, re a, a related person. According to the document, the proposed fund is classified as a hedge fund. Skybridge declined to disclose the size of targeted investment, but the minimum from any individual investor will be 50000 So you've got to have $50,000 just to buy in at a minimum. So again, it's going to be high net worth individuals. Well, let's not say high net worth individuals, but it certainly won't be too many average mum and day, uh, you know, dad, mum and all the rest of it, investors, uh, it, it will be, you know, generally people who've got a lazy 50,000 lying around, and I don't know too many people who've got that. The offering would take place under the SEC's uh, regulated D exemption, meaning that Skybridge's proposed Bitcoin fund would be only available to accredited, accredited investors. So again, number one, you've got to be accredited, accredited and all the rest of it. But look, they're still just doing this now, so they wouldn't even have started investing in Bitcoin just yet. So that means, you know, they've, they're still yet to put their money in. And again, I would imagine all the OTC kind of Bitcoin uh, is slowly but surely going to start to run out. And look, some of it is being bought, um, you, know, you know, off exchanges, hence why the price is going up. But a lot of it, I would say, is still uh, occurring OTC and that doesn't affect the market price. But again, at some stage, that just starts to run out. Uh, and then it is, you know, all systems go, <laughs> things will fire. Now, look, another thing. So Skybridge, you know, they haven't even got in yet. They're still filing all their forms and they will start to uh, purchase soon. I mean, they may sort of be purchasing anyway and may have already purchased, but just haven't allocated that Bitcoin towards the actual uh, Bitcoin fund yet. So that'll be interesting. We'll wait and see. Michael Saylor. He's bought more. He went ahead and did exactly what he said. MicroStrategy has purchased an additional 29,000 Bitcoins for 650 million and at an average price of 21,000. So again, people were nervous about, you know, buying Bitcoin before. Well, he was happy to buy it at 21,000. Skybridge is still yet to come in and probably still going to be purchasing. So look, we need to have that long-term long perspective. Could it dip from here? Absolutely. Is it going to dip a whole lot from here? Probably not. There's just too much buying going on at the moment. There's way too much buying going on at the moment. But if you're in it for the long term and these guys are getting in, and again, he bought it at an average price of 21000 uh, the newest lot, they're probably not thinking it'll go a whole lot lower. Again, not financial advice, just my personal opinion. Uh, now he's going to hodl and he has uh, 70,000 bitcoins purchased for 1.125 billion overall though because he bought these ones at an average price of that the other ones were cheaper excuse me at an average price of $15,900 if you bought your bitcoin under $15,900 I would say and again personal opinion not financial advice you'll probably never have to worry about losing any money on those Bitcoins. Uh, I think the next cycle low uh, is unlikely to be less than that because he owns such a large amount of Bitcoins and he's not going to sell them at a loss. And all these other big companies that are getting in likewise, they're not going to be selling them at a loss and they're probably not going to be selling all of them. They will only sell you know, X amount of them uh, over the time you know, to stay to remain liquid and then to try and buy back in cheaper at later stages. So really, for me, I'm already thinking any Bitcoin uh, that I've purchased under 21,000, I'll never sell. I'll just simply hold on to them 
you know, long term, long term, because I don't think the price will ever go down that low again. But look, again, I could be totally wrong about that. And of course, Peter Schiff down here having a little bit of a whinge about Bitcoin and you know, making all the whales really rich, uh, and before they unload them on you know the public and all the rest of it. But anyway, that's Peter Schiff. He has nothing better to do. Gold hasn't performed that well, so he's going to have a whinge. Uh, but look, there's every chance gold uh, can do something crazy next year as part of the reset and everything. And then he'll be rubbing it in everyone's notes as how good gold was. So that's Peter Schiff. Uh, he's a complete troll. When it's in his favor, he'll brag and let everyone know about it. When it's not, uh, he'll tell them how much of a, you know, a scam and all the rest of it is. But look. He, he makes money from Twitter, so we all need to remember that. He's got that many followers uh, that he'll be paid to be on Twitter, I'm quite sure. All right, are Bitcoin whales back? So Bitcoin whales are making a comeback. One River, Mass, One River Asset Management, a hedge fund specializing in volatility bets, has amassed substantial holdings and commitments worth $1 billion uh, by 2021, so it's still coming. In Bitcoin, and Ether, according to a report by Bloomberg. Eric Peters, the firm's founder, told the publication that he intends to set up a blue chip uh, fiduciary, I think that's how you say it, for cryptocurrencies targeted at institutional investors. So again, all this stuff at the moment is institutions. They are the ones that get in early and then later on they sell it to all the you know, mum and pop investors and all the rest of it, the average Joes. So if you got in before them, then you are sitting pretty. And it's not to say any money can't be made after it, but look, yeah, you've done well if you've got in before them. You truly are one of the early adopters and you will probably see some amazing returns uh, you know, from your purchases in years to come. And again, I have to keep saying this, but I just want you to understand that it's not financial advice. It's just my personal opinion. I am not a financial advisor, but I've been in the industry I uh, won't say in the industry because it's not like I'm in the Bitcoin industry, but I've been in the crypto space uh, for a, you know a good couple of years now and I have a rough understanding, I think, if not maybe even a good understanding compared to some of how it works. And, and I'm happy that, again, you know, I was lucky enough, I had some money sitting on the sidelines after the crash in March. Uh, you know, I was smart enough to go, all right, I'm going to put it in here. I don't think it's as risky as what people like to make out. And I think it will really, you know, help me move forward in my life in the future. And so far, it's done exactly that. Now we've just got to wait and see whether, you know, that uh, that investment uh, decision will pay off in the long term. And look, I, th I think it will. I think I'll be just fine uh, with those purchases. But again, we still have to wait and see. That's unrealized gains at the moment because the gains aren't realized until you sell, unfortunately. And I don't have any plan on selling anytime soon. All right, even more big news about institutions. So Las Vegas veterans of major crypto mining infrastructure firms, including one of the largest blockchain uh, infrastructure companies in the United States, today announced the formation of a new mining entity, BlockCap, which is believed to be the largest independent cryptocurrency mining operator in North America. So America is now getting into the Bitcoin race. They're not going to just leave it all up to China and let it be so centralized and all the rest of it. BlockCap combines the assets of five pre-existing Bitcoin mining companies, taking advantage of economies of scale in purchasing equipment and managing energy risks in order to ultimately provide higher returns for its investors. BlockCap operates what is among the largest collections of hashing power in North America, including highly valued public companies. BlockCap's current mining fleets includes close to 13,000 next generation uh, Bitmain S19 mining rigs and 500 upgraded S17s, of which 8,442 are presently deployed and 1,426 in process of being deployed. Present hashing power is approximately 800 uh, petahashes with projections to reach close to one uh, exahash at full deployment. With the entire Bitcoin mining network operating approximately 132 exahashes at present, BlockCap's operation could represent approximately 0.75% of the total hashing power of Bitcoin. So look, that's great news. You know, it just shows that you know adoption is getting bigger. Uh, you know, there's more money being put into Bitcoin and mining it, and you know, 
America's decided to get in on the race. They don't want it to be so, you know, monopolized sort of by the Chinese. Not that it is monopolized uh, the way a lot of people think of it. It's just the the mining companies over there have such a big reach. But then not all the miners are located in China. There's other people that have joined those groups, you know. Um, small mining companies will simply join up with the bigger mining companies to get cheaper power and all the rest of it. And look, now America's getting on board, uh, and I'm sure this will just be one of many. And look, other countries will do exactly the same. And again, but those companies, whether they start up their own, you know, individual mining pool, or again, just join the other bigger ones, uh, you know, we'll wait and see. Now, you know, we're looking at cryptocurrencies. This is a cryptocurrency focused channel, uh, and I've been very you know dubious about stocks but here was a really really interesting article that look if you get lucky uh, in the stocks you can still make some unbelievable returns that can actually outdo cryptocurrencies the thing with cryptocurrencies for me though is really just about anything in the top 50 that's a good project uh, you know and it's not a flyby you know quickly made it into the sort of top 100 not really top 50 so much and then drops out the guarantees that you're going to make, real, uh, you know, some good returns on it, uh, somewhat diminish uh, in the long, longer term. You know, i.e., more than you know, maybe a quick pump for a few hours or a week, and then it just disappears, goes to nothing, and you never see your money again. Uh, you know, the good coins in the top fifty, and definitely sort of the top twenty, and uh, again, definitely sort of the top ten, and all that. They're probably going to be around for a while, at least you know, 10, 12 months or something like that, maybe even longer, maybe years and years and years. So it's fairly easy to pick the right ones there uh, and make some good returns. Where in stocks, there's so many different stocks out there, it's hard to know which one. You know, again, you could go into the, uh, the S&P 500 and all the rest of it and make good returns, but nothing like crypto. But there are stocks that have done amazingly well. So let's go over here and have a look five high growth stocks that crushed bitcoin in 2020 now again you'd have to be lucky to you know really know which ones for this to happen so novavax no company outperformed bitcoin more decisively than clinical stage drug developer novavax shares of the company are up over 3200 percent year to date and were at one time higher by north of four thousand percent so this is where the big money is kind of being made at the moment, obviously with vaccines and all the rest of it. And look, if you were lucky enough to get in early and you know could see this coming, then you're reaping the rewards now. And yeah, you'll be laughing all the way to the bank as long as you've sort of sold. Now, also, there were two big themes that led to skyrocketing stock prices for the vaccines and anything having to do with renewable energy. So this is another one. So NEO. Uh, uh, and it's 1,000% year-to-date gains falls under the second category. So renewable energy and vaccines is where it's worth. So up 1,000% year-to-date. Bitcoin hasn't done that, and not a lot of cryptocurrencies have done that either. Don't get me wrong, there is uh, ones that have, but you know, ones in the top 10 and all the rest of it, uh, and you know, ones in the top 100, maybe not so much and these ones will probably sort of last for a while as well don't get me wrong i'm sure there's going to be uh, a sell-off and they will come back in price but you know again a, a lot of these stocks they, once they make it to this kind of level they're generally here for the sort of long term so it's interesting to know but i mean between all the stocks that are out there how could you know if to got into this one and, and again still similar to cryptocurrencies but at least in the cryptocurrencies, I know that anything in the top 50 uh, that's been entrenched and has been around for a while and is not something that just started up in the last two or three months, you know, it's probably been around for a while. It's going to be around for a little bit longer. But again, no guarantees in life. But NEO, 1,000%. Uh, plug power, nearly 1,000%. Again, another renewable energies uh, stock. Uh, doing extremely well and of course Tesla I mean up 800 600 uh, percent but my only worry about this and uh, Moderna so up 600 uh, percent so my only concern with these is stocks but look even cryptocurrencies to an extent they're all pro 
being propped up by the uh, the Fed balance sheet. You know, it's all the stimulus money that's being pumped into these uh, that is really pumping them up. So. Yeah, look, at some stage, the stimulus stops, and then what happens? What is going to get hammered the most? Will it be cryptocurrencies? You know, is the money that's gone into cryptocurrencies, you know, has a lot of that been, uh, you know, uh, fed helicopter money, or has only some of it been fed helicopter money? Uh, and likewise with these. That's the questions that uh, will be answered at some stage in the future. Uh, you know, exactly when that's going to be answered. Who knows, uh, you know, these vaccines, they're already having uh, issues with the vaccines and people having really bad allergic reactions to them and all the rest of it. So, you know, the Fed is likely to keep printing for uh, quite some time yet. And it could be something that's just ongoing for, you know, years to come yet. That's what we'll have to wait and see. All right, that's it from me. So we had a bit of a pullback. Seems things have corrected already, but... You know, which way the market's going to go? Could we still have a pullback? Sorry, last but not least. So, yeah, here's the Bitcoin chart, and I've put in the moving averages. So if we come back to the 50-day moving average, we got to drop down to 18,100. 18, we come back to the 100-day moving average, we're at 14,800. We come back to the 200-day moving average, we come back to $12,500. So these are all things we need to keep in mind. We are at some stage going to touch all of these, uh, and usually in a bull market, we come back and touch the 200 at least on a couple of occasions. So again, for me, I've got cash on the sideline just in case. I've built my positions. I will still dollar cost average a little bit here and there, but mainly I'm just simply putting my cash that I have coming in on a sort of weekly fortnightly basis and that into uh, you know in, into a cash reserve I'm waiting uh, for the really big dips and that's when I plan on uh, jumping back in that's where the best financial gains come when it comes back and reaches uh, these kind of things particularly if you know we have one where it comes down and touches the 200 day moving average that will be uh, quite an opportunity because again average price of 15,000 something dollars for Michael Saylor uh, and all of his Bitcoin so that means that is overpriced in comparison to the 200 day moving average I'm not saying it's a bad investment I'm just saying there could be an opportunity where it falls down to here and you can get in for basically cheaper than Michael Saylor's average buying price hence why I have cash sitting on the side all right, stay safe, be kind to one another. We're all probably uh, lost a little bit over a few days here, but you know, hopefully we're still all on that game train long term, and I'll see you next time.